You know, sometimes I get the wrong read of a person, and this is one of those times. Roll the intro. Yeah, I'm back, but also, I'm black. Hey, what's up everybody? Yes, I returned to your phone, your computer, your TV, your tablet, your laptop. I thought I wasn't recording, but whatever. I don't know what you're watching me from, but welcome back. It's me, it's Malcolm. And today I have been observing what's going on. If you clicked on this title, either you know about it or wanna know what's going on. I'm gonna try to be as short and sweet as possible because I know um, a lot of people don't like drawing out videos, so I'm going to just get into it. So Alexa Nicholas has been someone I talked about on my channel. I have kind of given her a shout out um, because of the quiet on said documentary and saying, you know, hey, you know, go listen to her story because I think her story is valid. Let me just clear this up before we get into it. I still think her story is valid. However, her actions and behaviors around everything else I do have a problem with so what's going on okay so for me with this whole thing with the next look on alexa nicholas it started um way way like a, a long time ago like a couple months ago even before the docuseries like came out um long story short alexa nicholas, uh, alexa kind of gave me like this vibe that like she was all about herself and the Alexa was definitely someone that was like trying to like lead these protests against Nickelodeon and things like that. I think that's great, right? However, recently it seems that she wants to be the loudest voice in the room and I don't think that's the way things should go. Reason being is because recently she has been accused of hanging out with Drake Bell, um, hiring Andrew Brettler. For those who don't know, Andrew Brettler is like someone who has represented people like Danny Masterson, um, Colleen Ballinger, which is a big, big thing. And again, this is alleged. I can't prove that this is true because she will not answer directly if like Andrew Brettler's her lawyer. So let's go back to the quiet on said documentary because this is where it kind of started for me. Um, not too long after the quiet on said documentary ended, Alexa Nicholas kind of posted merch in relation to the response to the quiet on said documentary. And honestly, I wasn't the only one that thought it was weird. A lot of people thought it was weird because she didn't mention that, you know, the proceeds were going to like a good cause. It was more so like, it seemed like the money was going into her pocket directly. So she was profiting off of everybody's trauma for her sake and for her pockets, which did not sit right with me. And I'm kind of upset I didn't speak about it, up about it more. I think I like quote tweeted the post where she was selling merch and I was like, this is kind of weird, which I still think it was kind of weird that you're selling merch based off everybody else's story and you're not even like contributing to a foundation or a charity that everybody could benefit from. So it was just kind of like she was the only person benefiting from it, which again, I thought that was weird and it kind of like put a sour taste in my mouth. Um. The next couple weeks after that, she would just keep coming after Nickelodeon. And I think she got Ariana Grande to do an interview with her as well, which I thought, okay, Ariana Grande, which for those that are kind of confused, a lot of people thought Ariana Grande was kind of under this NDA that she couldn't speak about her experience with the Sam and Cat show. Um, so that was kind of like a big deal at the time. And the reason why I'm kind of bringing up like her videos and stuff is because Alexa has made a video about one of Drake Bell's um, victims. 
and then deleted it after the documentary or whatever came out, right? And this goes back to people being upset that Alexa has been, you know, allegedly hanging out with Drake Bell. Like there was a video of her at Drake Bell's concert, like you can see her face and everything. And she still hasn't addressed it and said that wasn't her to my knowledge. Um, if she has addressed it at this point in time, cause today is September 17th, 2024. If somebody would like to correct me, please just let me know. And I have said in my video before about Drake Bell, which was, you know, I don't know the full story and, you know, I was going to look into it and I did look into it. Right. And long story short, Drake Bell knew damn well what he was doing. And I think it's very disgusting and very misleading how he tried to spin the narrative that the media got it wrong when pretty much they got it right, you know? So I'm saying it here and now. I know I'm a lot of months late, so that's on me. I take responsibility for that, but I'm definitely like not supporting Drake Bell because of the evidence that I've seen where he definitely knew what he was doing with this minor. And I find it very disgusting. And let this be clear that two things can be true. Drake Bell was a victim of himself, but he also had victims. And I think that's kind of where like this disconnect for Alexa is coming from, where it seems like, in my personal opinion, she, it seems like Alexa is trying to feed off of the attention and fame that Drake Bell got after the Quiet On Set documentary ended. And I don't know if she's bitter that she did not get the same amount of attention or whatever, but that's the vibe that it's giving me and it doesn't just, it doesn't feel right. Also, this on the heels of deleting a video about one of Drake Bell's victims off of your channel when you talk about how you want to like support like survivors and stuff, but like that in itself is a direct contradiction to what you believe in, okay? So that's that's kind of one thing. So the whole Drake Bell thing, and then allegedly working with Colleen Ballinger's um, lawyer, attorney, representative, whatever you want to call him, Danny Masterson's representative. Like this Andrew Brettler person has represented a lot of controversial figures, and some of them, not all of them, uh, to my like I could be wrong. But some of them have done predatory things. So for Alexa Nicholas to allegedly work with predat like someone that's defended predators, I have a problem with because it seems very hypocritical to say, you know, you're here for the survivors, like all this stuff. And then you are allegedly directly working with someone that has defended someone that has done predatory things. I have a problem with that it comes off disingenuous and it comes off like you're the most important person in the room. Okay. So if that is true, that's very disgusting. In my opinion, I find that extremely effed up to be perfectly honest. And that's just kind of how I feel about that. And then there was another situation that I kind of saw happen in real time, which was Alexa was harassing someone that just recently got out of surgery. So long story short about this situation is, Alexa got wind that this person was like talking bad about them and all this good stuff, right? And Alexa got really mad and just went on this long Twitter rant about this person and, and Alexa was accusing the person that got open heart surgery because this person had a fundraiser for their hospital stay and things like that. And basically Alexa was saying that this person was not using the money the right way or they were pocketing the money, basically saying that they were a liar. Uh, Alexa was blowing up their phone, which caused 
complications after surgery, which I, again, that's it, that, how do I say it? That got me shaking. Whoa. <laughs> that makes me even more mad because how dare you? And when I say how dare you, it's because it was proven in court that this person did not lie about what they were using the money for. They were actually using the money the right way. They were using it for the right reasons. And Alexa, I guess because she got mad that someone was saying something bad about her, she turned it into an internet spectacle to try to make herself sound like the victim in this when she wasn't. She was actually the attacker and she was the bully in the situation. And the fact that Alexa still, to my knowledge, hasn't like redacted her statements or even apologized to the person that she hurt, it comes off like Alexa only wants to be the only person with a voice. And I think that's a problem, right? And then we get to now and she was gone for like, five six months i didn't know this and the first thing i see is her posting a photo of cat 10 bars where she's saying like this is the reason why i took a break and everybody was kind of like just a little bit confused about what what this meant and even i was confused i didn't know what was going on but basically for those that don't know cat 10 barge is a journalist who actually is really really good at their job and Kat Tenbarge was like asking Alexa Nicholas all these like interview questions and Alexa took it as like a personal attack and basically saying like why do I have to answer this like I don't owe you an explanation when Kat Tenbarge is literally just doing her job and uh, on a live stream, uh, I think it was last week, a couple days ago, um, Alexa kind of read some of these questions out on her live stream. And a lot of people that were in support of Alexa were like, these are normal questions. I'm very confused. And Adam McIntyre, who is Kat Tenmarsh's friend, kind of came to Kat's defense. And next thing you know, Adam McIntyre got dragged into it and... He's made a couple video videos about this situation, but long story short, um, please go watch Adam's video about all this because, you know, Alexa definitely said a lot of vile things about him and Kat, so I'm not going to take that away from him. So please go watch his live stream uh, replays, clips, whatever you have you. Um, but basically, Alexa Nicholas was insinuating that Adam McIntyre and Kat Tenbars were the bullies in the situation to so the point where she was going to prove them wrong. And, oh, sorry, a major, major plot point about this. And this is why I'm bringing it up because this is like the most important part. So I apologize for not bringing it up sooner. But Alexa Nicholas got a hold of these sealed court documents relating to Drake Bell and his victim. Now, let's. Okay. The sealed court documents contained, contains, sorry, information about the victim, which Alexa then went to post and said that she blacked out information, but then she went on to post the court documents anyway. So, so, so. This means that Alexa, to prove a point of a story that did not involve her and putting a minor in danger, she puts court documents out that now all these people can have access to and get access to all this information that they should not have. And that is a major problem because all Alexa is thinking about at this point is herself. She's not thinking about any of the other victims around her. She's only thinking about herself and how to make herself not look like the bad guy. But in term, in trying to not look like the bad guy, she has done something that I think is so vile 
which is violating a minor's privacy, especially, I think, for me, I think that is the biggest issue here, is to prove a point. She posted, <laughs> oh boy, she posted docu like documentation where, and she posted a link, you know, so people can click on the link and just like find information. And it contains information about a minor, you know? And I think that is gross. I think I think that's so irresponsible of your platform because like you have like some beef with people that are asking genuine questions about your actions and like what's going on. And I did see some of Alexa's live streams where um, some people were like, who is your lawyer? Because if it is Andrew Brettler, then everything that you've said about like being there for survivors and everything was a lie because what you really are there for is yourself. And if you're only there for yourself and you're using your platform the wrong way, that is a problem. Okay. So going back to um, the Adam McIntyre, Kat Ten Barge, and then the Alexa Nicholas thing, right? So Alexa was basically trying to be like, I'm going to prove you wrong. You're going to look so stupid in a couple days when you see all this, all this stuff. And still, even right now, Alexa Nicholas is refusing to answer any of the questions that both Adam McIntyre and Kat Ten Barge have for her. One being, who's your lawyer? Two being, how did you get the documents? Because one, it wasn't even a court case that involved her, right? And two, they are sealed documents. So how she got her hands on sealed court documents. These court documents pertaining to information of a minor. How she got that, she still is not answering how she got that. And again, I think that is irresponsible of someone with a semi-huge platform to be doing that. And I'm looking at, well, not right now, but I was looking at like the responses to Alexa under her own video and they're not good. <laughs> like, I think she has like 380 likes and I can't see the dislikes, but if it has like 8,000 plus views, I can only imagine the dislikes are really high, okay? So I'm just kind of like noticing all this in real time and Alexa has still yet to take accountability for like essentially putting someone in danger. And that's just kind of how I feel about it. And let's just kind of like clear the air about this. Again, two things can be true. Just because I am criticizing Alexa Nicholas for all of her actions outside of her story does not mean I am trying to invalidate her story. So I hope nobody is listening to this video thinking I'm trying to say that her story doesn't matter or her story is invalid now. That's not the case. Same thing with Drake Bell. Two things can be true. He was harmed, but he did harm to other people. And I think in the sphere of social media in 2024, it's almost like you don't want to call out someone that has been a victim because immediately that means you're trying to discredit them, which I don't think that's fair. I think that, again, both things can be true. I think if someone is done wrong, you call it out. But also you can stay, still say their story still like holds weight. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like my take on all this. I think Alexa Nicholas is using her platform in like the wrong way. I think she's doing a lot of things out of spite and she's not really seeing the repercussions of her actions. Um, a lot of people have been harmed through Alexa Nicholas. So I like, I do have a problem with that. Like you can't say you like, like you're there for survivors and then just basically shit on everybody else because you don't like them. I don't think that's fair. You know what I'm saying? And again, if she is working with someone that has represented predatory people, again, that just goes back to the notion that she is all about herself and making herself look good. And again, I don't think that's fair to the people around her. You know what I'm saying?
or like the people that like worked with her or like had like some interaction with her that's what i meant i'm sorry um so i just want to kind of finish this off like why i care about this so much and why i wanted to speak up finally which was for those that if you made it this far in the video thank you um for those that have kind of been with me in the beginning and my commentary like sphere and i have never talked about this to this day but if anybody remembers me from the anna campbell situation um long story short anna campbell is off the internet she doesn't have a social media anymore her youtube's gone right so if everybody remembers that situation um and for those that don't know i'll just give you a quick rundown anna campbell was someone that abused her platform she just like Colleen Ballinger was like messaging minors in like group chats and things like that, saying like sexual things um, with like photo evidence. And long story short, I made some videos about it. I made some videos about the survivors of Anna Campbell. Uh, it was mainly like these three girls and they made a video together. And sometime after that, like everything like fell apart. There was a falling out. Um, like people did go to court and one of the main reasons why i kind of stopped talking about it was because it went to court like at that point it went to court things were happening there was no point in like me speaking up while a court case was happening and i think i don't know it might be still open or it might be closed now but either way basically what happened was some of the some of the people some of the survivors kind of like did some shady things behind the scenes they did some things publicly on their social media platforms that um really hurt some people's feelings like hurt a lot of people and at that time um i got called out for like not speaking up when they were doing vile things like back so i always kind of like regretted that that i didn't speak up fast enough and to this day i still kind of regret that so when I learned that I gave Alexa Nicholas like a platform, even though I know I had like 9,000 subscribers or what have you, but I still like gave her like a shout out. I told people to, like go follow her and things like that. Only to then afterwards for her to like be exposed for doing all these vile things, profiting off of the docuseries, which apparently she got mad at the Quiet On Set crew that um, she wasn't invited out to like some award show uh, when they were nominated for an award and she got really mad at that but like I, I, I don't know what you expected there Alexa like did like I don't know <laughs> but um ever since that Anna Campbell situation I have kind of like made a personal promise to myself that like if I do platform somebody else if I do like give somebody a shout out and like down the road they turn out to like not be as genuine as i thought i was gonna do better at speaking up when something bothered me about that again that's just like a personal story for me um i don't know if anybody that covered the anna campbell stuff back in the day is still around um i do know that there was like this one major creator that was like gonna cover the story and then after everything fell apart they silently just stopped and I'm not gonna say who it is. Um, the people that were around that time like kind of know who it was. But um, long story short, I kind of like, I keep that in the back of my mind that uh, I do also need to be more responsible with my platform. So if I'm going to highlight somebody, I also need to call it out when if I do highlight somebody, they start like doing the wrong things. And Alexa Nicholas has started doing the wrong things. and. For a long time, she's been doing the wrong things, you know? And I find it funny that um, I kind of defended Alexa Nicholas, I think it was last year, when Christy Carlson Romano kind of like deleted a video of her and Alexa off of her channel or whatever. I can't remember the whole story, but basically I defended Alexa, like calling out Christy Carlson Romano saying like, it's kind of weird that, you know, she deleted Alexa's story and is platforming someone that is predatory and then i got blocked by christy carlson romano and i was like oh okay so i guess this was correct and i guess this was true 
and that she never addressed it and then she just moved on so i do find it kind of ironic that now alexa deleted a video featuring a victim of drake bell and then people and she expected people just to not catch that you know so i think that's kind of like all i have to say i'm really sorry if i kind of went all over the place but um I really like I really woke up today and I was like I want to speak up about this because I in a way like gave her a shout out I gave her like you know I gave like people that didn't know about her like I kind of like fed like fed them to her and say here you go go support this person and now I'm saying you know after everything I've seen and everything I've read I can't I can't vibe with that I can't fuck with that you know what I'm saying so for those people that I sent to Alexa Nicholas, and then obviously you got disappointed. I apologize if anybody used my word and went to go support her only for her to turn out to not be as genuine as I thought. So that's on me and I will take responsibility for that. But I think I kind of said everything I needed to say. Um, if Alexa does address like who her lawyer is or how she got these sealed court documents. Um, I don't think she will. I'll be very surprised. But I think that's really all I have to say about this for now. Once again, it is Malcolm. That's me. Um, free balling off the top. If you say the song, thank you. Uh, really don't have much else to say except, you know, hey, I wish you well. I wish you good health. And I will see you again next time.